Hey friends, it's a Thursday. Welcome back to your friendly neighborhood hot news. Hope you are enjoying your life. One last reminder, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, this is the last time I'm gonna talk about it. We're having our third annual charity live stream. It's gonna go for 24 hours and we're raising money for Syngap Research Fund, which is a research organization dedicated to helping cure and treat Syngap, which is the disorder that my son has, as well as hundreds of other people have the rare disease in the world. And it's gonna to go towards a researcher who's gonna be able to understand the Syngap gene a lot better. So to help incentivize the fact that we need to raise a lot of money to get this money to the researcher, I'm ponying up, as I've mentioned, my personal rig. This is my one of a kind custom UFD Tech PC. It actually even says UFD Tech down here at the motherboard. That's a thousand dollar motherboard right there. It has a Ryzen 9 3950X, 64 gigs of 3600 megahertz RAM, an RX 5700 XT. And as you can see, it's custom water cooled, but I took the water cooling pipes out because I'm getting it ready to ship it out. Okay, because I'm actually giving it away and we're giving away a whole bunch of other stuff. We've got other partners such as Ting and MSI and Synergy coming through for the stream. And there's going to be the possibility to unlock another 2080 Ti giveaway as well as a 3950X by itself. We got all of that coming up. So check out tomorrow. You're going to not want to miss this 24 hour stream. We got a lot of good stuff planned. We're going to have a few guest appearances. It's going to be good. Mark your calendar. Show up tomorrow. I'll see you here. And now you get to see NVIDIA's RTX 30 series. They released a surprise YouTube video on how they redesigned the cooler, essentially confirming what we knew already, that the cooler is the way we thought it was. So it's an eight minute video. It has a lot of good information about their philosophy behind the design and the way that they're going to do things with the upcoming 30 series cooler. And they included a key few pictures. So you see this one right here, this basically confirms the shape. And it also confirms that both of the fans actually draw the air up through the card. This one going up to the actual CPU cooling and then out the back. And then this fan over here, which is actually covered on this side, on the back side of the PCB, goes, goes out. However, one of the things I want to note is that while you might be tempted to think that the lines here indicate temperature, that the blue is colder and then it gets warm as it's going out, it actually indicates the speed at which it's flowing through the chassis, not actually the temperatures through which it's flowing through the ch chassis. So the air that's coming through here going to probably be quite hot, hit your CPU tower and then blow out the back also being quite hot. So we'll see how that affects actual temperatures. But then there's more pictures such as the underside of the PCB. This actually looks like armor on a superhero now that I'm seeing it again. But NVIDIA directly confirming the fact that this card does exist in this way that it looks. Also confirming the 12 pin power connector and the fact that they did it for size. There should be an included adapter with the cards. That's at least with the indication I got from the video and they've reduced it not for a greater power draw, but to limit the size because they also in this image, as you can see here, confirmed the V-shaped PCB that we have been anticipating is going to go into these next gen cards. So a lot of weird designs are going on here to actually make it able to cool itself and because they wanted to go with a shorter PCB, they went with a shortened 12 pin power connector, which you will have to adapt from your eight pin. It likely still will be a massive behemoth, the 3090, and likely will still require a 850 watt plus power supply, but the 12 pin being confirmed as a real thing. On top of that, Video Cards released an article saying that they have independently confirmed the VRAM amount on the upcoming cards. The RTX 3090 is gonna be getting 24 gigabytes of VRAM. However, they've also confirmed that there is no 3080 Ti right now, but there's no confirmation as to whether or not the 3090 is the Titan replacement. It could still be, we get the 3090, a 3080, which they confirm has 10 gigabytes of VRAM, and then potentially a 3080 Ti that fits in the middle there, and then still a Titan yet once more. We'll have to see if that actually plays out, but the way it's gonna break down, RTX 3090, 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the launch RTX 3080 with 10 gigabytes of VRAM and a lot still unknown about the upcoming RTX 3070, but we'll have to wait and see for just a little bit. We only have a few days left before Nvidia drops all of this on us. But Nvidia is dropping out a lot of wins because John Petty Research came out and said that, yeah, they've increased a lot. They are now accounting for 80% of the GPU market share. The overall GPU shipments increased two and a half percent amd shipments increased 8.4 percent intel decreased by 2.7 percent and nvidia increased by 17.8 percent 
NVIDIA just killing it, likely only to get better with AMD not releasing a GPU anytime soon. We're still waiting probably mid-November before AMD comes out with theirs. Now let's switch gears to talking about how you're gonna buy stuff in the future through Instagram because they have rolled out their in-app shopping cart to all US businesses, which will potentially bring a lot more revenue because it's gonna integrate things into the app and allow transactions to happen directly on the app. And so for like sponsor segments or ads that happen either with a creator or without a creator, it's going to allow people to get through that click funnel to buy the stuff even better. So we'll see how this actually ends up working out. But Instagram is expecting that this is going to be a good thing for a lot of businesses who advertise with them. And you're going to want to learn how to advertise with Apple because they're going to be on more devices than you could have ever imagined. You think it's just Mac and iOS. No, no, it's going to be on a headset. You're going to see them in augmented reality. And they just purchased another VR company that puts real faces on virtual avatars. They acquired Spaces, which does VR experiences and a way to help your virtual avatar in Zoom. Apple picking that up and that could potentially be to help supplement technology such as the fact that they're working on augmented reality content for their TV plus shows which is incredibly intriguing and I think I kind of really like it the AR if I just have to wear AR goggles no okay so now that I'm fleshing this out live it's going to be kind of gimmickly like the 3D vision thing but if I'm wearing their like virtual reality headset I'm watching the TV and then I can have extra content in my room that might work I'm not sure what do you think of augmented reality TV content to supplement TV shows that you're already currently watching and let me know what you think about Facebook saying hey Hey, Apple, you're going to take away a lot of our money when you make it so that we can't take people's data without them agreeing to it because of new ad policies that Apple's going to have in iOS 14. They're going to have anti-tracking updates that make it so that you have to opt in to get Apple's device identifier because Facebook's audience network uses that uh, without asking. They need to ask you. And Facebook is saying that they're going to see a 50% drop in revenue because of this. Hey, Apple, this, you know, we're going to we're going to team up with Epic Games because they want to not pay you as much money. And now you're taking money from us and we don't like that. We we don't ha we shouldn't have to ask people to take their stuff. It's not theirs. D did I do enough like a whiny child for for Facebook? I'm not sure if that's the correct approach. That's the sense that I get from this. Obviously, this is going to hurt advertisers and it's not necessarily a good thing for businesses overall, but it's also like Apple's doing the right thing for making sure that you have to opt into such a service. That's my take on it. What do you think about it? Let me know down below in the comments. And just a quick little addendum to Apple, the Apple Watch Series 6 and new iPad models got filed with the Eurasian Economic Commission. So there's new EEC filings for that, which makes sense because we're expecting a new iPhone launch, which a new watch would come with that. Now let's talk about Fortnite on Apple devices because they're forks. Yeah, no, actually really because Epic Games coming out and saying because, because Apple hasn't let us back because we violated the terms of service. <laughs> iOS and macOS users won't be able to do season four. <laughs> We're going to have to fork it so that they play on their own one. Fortnite users are forked. Hashtag free Fortnite, even though we backed ourselves into a corner on this and made this happen. And I'm just, just so anybody is not clear on my stance here, I could simultaneously understand that Apple may be charging too much for any transactions that are happening and also recognize the fact that Epic Games absolutely played this hand and this is exactly what they wanted. So any attempt to make Apple look like the bad guy here for banning Fortnite is completely on Epic Games, even if the reason is justified because Epic Games forced this situation. Or am I going too hard? Is the, is the crying thing a little bit too much? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of this LG Wing phone, which is a regular phone, but then has a wing, as you can see here. That's actually kind of useful, at, at least in the situation that they're showing with navigation and music and audio play. I kind of I kind of like this implementation. This looks really cool. Super gimmicky phone, but oh man, I kind of want to try that. 
I don't want to try Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which is simply because I'm not a COD guy, but that's coming out November 13th, but it's being done by Raven Software for the campaign, and they apparently have a good track record in making single player stuff. And just to just to talk about the thing that affects most of us, at least with regards to COD, is that the pricing gets super weird. So in order to get the regular standard edition, it's gonna be $60, but then to get the cross-gen edition, that's $70, and the ultimate edition is $90. That's that's if you buy it digitally, but if you buy it physically, the PS4 physical copy can get upgraded to the PS5 version via the PlayStation Network, but the Xbox One physical copy can't upgrade to the Series X. So you can upgrade the PS4, but you can't upgrade the Xbox One, but in case you get the PS5, you can't downgrade to the PS4, which makes sense because the PS5 is gonna be a 4K Blu-ray player and the PS4 is just a regular Blu-ray player, but the Xbox Series X version can be played on the Xbox One and the Xbox Series X. So what? What? And it's unclear if this is the Xbox Series X enhanced version or just reposting the current gen as playable on both consoles because you can see here the image says Series X and Xbox One. So it's a it's a snip snap snip snap snip snap situation with this. The, the, the cross gen in between these two generations of consoles is getting weird, especially because now we have games as a service. So they last a lot longer and it's not just like a single player. It's, wow, this is wild. It's also wild is the DJI Osmo Mobile 4 or the OM4 as they're calling it now, which has a key few features which are really cool, including a magnetic mount that allows you to set it in landscape or portrait mode. It's going to cost $150, which is great good because the Osmo Mobile 4 is basically the industry standard for smartphone gimbals. It's a good little piece of tech that launched recently. Also, it's a good little piece of tech that launched recently. And when I say little, I mean really little. Cornell University has a laser activated robot that is smaller than a paramecium. So the Cornell physics professor invented this and it is a micrometer scale actuator system that seamlessly integrates with semiconductor processing in response to standard electronic control signals. You can see an image of it here next to a paramecium, and then you can see a little video of it hippity hopping around in its cellular goo. Speaking of cellular goo, drop, drop Oculus. I'm done with Oculus. That's my personal stance on it. I don't wanna have to log in to Facebook in order to use Oculus, and Facebook is now really moving forward on just rebranding everything Oculus. So the Oculus Connect Conference is now being, gonna be called the Facebook Connect Conference, and they're gonna be essentially calling every version of Oculus stuff, the Oculus Research, is now Facebook Reality Labs. So nothing about Oculus is gonna be Oculus anymore, and it's all gonna be Facebook integrated. I'm dropping it, I'm done. I don't, I don't care how good your VR technology is. I'm not playing this game. I will go with a Vive Cosmos, okay? I will pay more to get a technically worse experience if it means that I don't have to necessarily sign in with Facebook. I, I just don't, I don't like that. And I don't like being behind on the times, and neither does TSMC with them coming out and announcing that it has secured orders for its two nanometer node, which essentially puts Samsung behind the mark, but while they're expected to be on the three nanometer node, it looks like TSMC is actually moving forward at a faster pace and they're gonna have two nanometer orders going in quite quickly. Now let's talk about quite quick because you might wanna pick up this new augmented reality game that is called The Witcher Monster Slayer, which is essentially Pokemon Go, but with lessons. So that's neat, it's kinda of cool. It's done by an offshoot of CD Projekt Red you might want to check that out. You also might want to check out Airplane Mode, which is like a totally different feel because it's just essentially you play a video game that allows you to be on a six hour flight in economy. It's cool. This is exactly what you need. It's calm. It's relaxing. Not much going on. Unlike Doom Eternal, which thanks to liquid nitrogen overclocking hit its engine max frame rate of 1000 FPS. We talked about this in an episode of Hot News when id Software announced it, which is that the engine that Doom Eternal runs on can go to 1000 FPS, but we haven't had anything that could do it. Well, overclockers with liquid nitrogen with the 9700K and a 2080 Ti were able to push it so that they could indeed hit that 1000 FPS mark. See here, liquid nitrogen going down and there is the 1000 FPS that happened in Doom Eternal. Their engine can actually run it. What do you know? And I can run on out of here. Don't forget, tomorrow, charity live stream starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can help us and potentially find a cure for my son, which is the most important thing. And I care about it so much that I am willing to give away my custom one of a kind UFD Tech PC. This means a lot to me. I got this motherboard while I was in South Africa. It was one of the very few pieces of technology that I brought over with me. I love this motherboard. It says UFD Tech.
and it can be yours because that's how much my son means to me. I will give up any piece of technology if it means that we can get some hope for him in the future. So if you would show up tomorrow and mean a lot to me, I appreciate it. I will go now to get ready for that. I love you guys. See you at the charity stream. Bye. Wait, where am I going? I'm, I'd stay here.